him. It is chaos in the manager of the Hamakito. This is fantastic sailing. Team New Zealand are in a magnificent position. What a thriller it has been. Five-minute gun round the ends. Race six, Louis Vuitton Cup final. Alinghi coming in from starboard, from port, and a little late is Oracle. Must be quite strong, though, eh, Russell? That for him to, he, he's pushing us that direction. Go try and cross here. No, no, going to trip it right up. Well, both boats have entered, and now you see Oracle trying to turn up and use the power of the fact that they were on the upwind end to cross over in front of Alinghi, but it's not going to happen for him. Okay. Is he altering? Oh. Ready to park it. Get ready to park it from Brad by the He's still on board. They are 50 meters apart from the start line now. He's going the other way, Pete. Hard bear away with speed, hard bear away with speed. Bear away can we with swing? Speed. Yes, we can swing. Because Oracle has turned, and can Alinghi is staying inside it to stop them coming back. Now watch. Alinghi has right of way. Can Oracle get feet. around Overland. in front of them? Quicker. Eric Doyle is telling Peter quicker, Holmberg that he's quicker. Still can Oracle that. escape down from there and bit. sail across the top? Because if Coots can shut can him out, he'll cut him down the coffin corner. Always risky, Peter. They're going to try to do it, but it's going to take a while. If it doesn't work, Peter Holmberg's going to have to make a choice to turn back up and try to lock Alinghi into a, a more difficult position than previous. Still overlap here, Pete. Right, Russell. Right. It's not big, right. though, Oh, watch out now. No, Getting closer on Oracle. Big, risky. Top of the course, but... By the excess point, there's good breeze as well, so they just get a nice start. Watch the transom turning into the bow. I haven't got a big favor either way. Flag him. Russell said flag him. Still close, boys. He's also, he's keeping up. We've come up well, we like. Come on. You're all clear, all clear, Pete. Eric Doyle saying we're all clear. Didn't look like it to me. No, I didn't like that move by Oracle. That's a dangerous position. What will the umpires do? Oracle blue penalty. Oracle's got a penalty. Oracle is blue. So Oracle has copped a penalty for their trouble. Rotating. So already Oracle. Ready? Show me. Yeah. Peter, uncharacteristic move by Peter Holmberg there. I would have thought he'd have escaped a different way. You want pin? But you like Here comes a Lingy back at him again. I think you're right. Nope, they chose not to. A little too close to get up to speed on the new side of the circle, so Alinghi's going to stretch it out this way a little. Inside two minutes now. Tight under him for his choice, correct? Time to kill. Remember, left-hand side of the line is favored in the wind right now. Full speed here. We'll be jiving on his face when he goes. Well, it's close for Alinghi to be turning back now, and we already heard Oracle's going to turn inside them when they do. Brad Butterworth says he wants the left, meaning Oracle wants the left. Let him go. Watch him for the snake, Woodward. A little bit of line by his committee boat now. Ready, guys? Let's get ready to trim on. Trim it on. Big trim on. Big trim on. Big trim on. Big trim on. That's the voice of Peter Holmberg. Big trim on. So we're going to want to be close under him, though. Got him, got him. I'm actually happy to take the left if you want to get it. What's that to do? One minute. Well, and that's Murray Jones saying to take the left if you can get it. Too late now, no? Yeah, okay, but it's, I'm saying it's not a big deal, but I'm happy to take it. Uh, 
but he's uh, of two minds up top of the rig. Murray's up at the top spreader. Jumpers. Eric Doyle reassuring Vita Holm that he can't get to you. Oh, it's close, it's close. Watch. He cannot get to you. He cannot get to you. He's locked to weather. Full trim. 30 seconds, full trim from Chris Dixon on Oracle. I think he's right on top. Boy, they've got time to kill here. They really have to kill about 15 seconds. They're only 20 meters back from the line. Coming up 15 seconds, Oracle pulls the bow down at a split pack start. Oracle powering up on starboard, coming out to the pin. Alingi on port, going across to race control. The gun, Marcello, race six. Louis Vuitton gun. Final. Chris Dixon complimenting Oracle on a nice start. And Peter, right now, the wind is back to 15, which is, makes the line exactly square. So they should be exactly equal as they climb up the ladder towards this first mark. Interesting as they take off from the line. You know, the spectator fleet will definitely have an effect on the wind speed out here. And Oracle is sailing closer to the spectator fleet on the left than Alinghi is on the right. So we may see Alinghi start to gain. And in fact, right here, you see on the virtual spectator view, there's a slow gain going on by Alinghi in that right-hand position. Alinghi had the advantage of having uh, forced a penalty onto Oracle in the pre-start. We're coming up to the very important first cross of the sixth race. Oracle coming out of the left. Looked like that clear ahead. They're on port tech. They are the giveaway boat. Alinghi on starboard tech, but they cannot get to Oracle. So Oracle have, it looks like, about a length and a half advantage at that First cross as they go by, and Oracle electing tactically now to protect the right-hand side for starboard advantage. But certainly so much of this race is going to be dependent on that penalty which occurred before the start. And if we have a replay of it here, it was Oracle on the left there, jibed onto port, trying to get across the bow of Alinghi on starboard tack. Couldn't quite do it. Came back and jibed. And that's where the penalty was awarded. Oracle electing to continue on out to the right-hand side. And we're seeing a decent chunk, a decent amount of separation again. Alinghi carrying on. Now, Alinghi coming back out of the left-hand corner. But again, we've seen here a decent bit of separation between the boats it's very light and as the wind breeze, uh, builds we have seen the afterguards thinking that the left hand side maybe looks a little bit more powerful but looking at that shot oracle has just extended out that's the advantage line just over five boat lengths oracle just steadily slowly but steadily extending their lead on this long port hand tack well we've just heard that the umpires awarded the penalty before the start for port starboard so that would suggest to me that the umpires determined that oracle had not completed their jibe before Lingi had to take evasive action to avoid a collision Still going a bit nicer than him, we are. Just, yeah. just inching up. Just here, Brad Butterworth talking about the advantage they're, they're getting by being on the left-hand really side. Yeah. 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 They're pulling it back. They're making a gain. Now, the other piece of information we've heard from off the boats is from Oracle, where Chris Dixon and Peter Holmwood were talking about getting rid of the penalty early if the opportunity arises so back they come coming back starboard tack to the second cross are they going to try and get rid of the penalty before the top mark right now they don't have enough lead to do the penalty and stay in the lead so you might see thinner angles on this tack yeah it is it we'll just have to wait and see how this one develops before mark number one yeah 
So Holmberg concentrating on helming the view from the afterguard of Oracle across to Alinghi. Back on board as they just concentrate on every metre they can get. He's tacking now. Yep, so BMG sailing. Alinghi just putting themselves tactically in the lured position, setting themselves to be as close as, pop as possible to Oracle as they go up to the top mark. They have conceded. It's probably their game plan is to keep the game close. They know that they don't have to win the race on the water with that penalty um, owing. And Oracle is right up on that, getting quite close to that ley line. So the afterguard of Alinghi just want to keep it close. Just a click faster than that. Two boat lengths the advantage yeah. to Oracle. And Lingi down to Lewitt. They'll be quite happy keeping it this close. Well, we expect the boats to go around the weather mark at about this distance yeah. apart, Peter. Yeah, no reason uh, to believe it's going to be a big change in the next three or four minutes by the time they get there. But downwind, who is faster? It's going to be yeah, a very yeah. critical Close time the in the race. So Jordy Chaver and Bill Bates are just going through their housework on the poor deck of Oracle, getting ready for the hoist. Peter, I'm impressed with what Alinghi has done here in the last eight or ten minutes. It looked to me like Oracle had a little speed edge in this wind speed, but in fact, Alinghi has come right back into the game here. Oracle tax on the final approach to mark number one. Now look at the difference in angle right there. Alinghi tacked a little bit beyond the ley line and is accelerating at a faster angle. Oracle tacked a little thin and is going to lose a little bit because they won't be up to full speed as they turn this mark. And also the angle they're coming in from makes it a little harder. Anyway, here we come. Mark one, race six, Louis Vuitton Cup final. Oracle one, leading, hoist. but a penalty outstanding with the hoist. Excellent hoist by the Oracle crew. As a lingy goes round and the Louis Vuitton clock clicks off at 15 seconds. Going into the second leg. Okay, I'm going nice set on Alinghi. And notice how Alinghi has turned down inside Oracle a little bit. That was the advantage they had by coming in with a bit more speed at the mark rounding. But already it seems like Oracle has got just a little bit of forward speed edge against Alinghi. We're driving when he drives, guys. Not Brad Butterworth of Water Lingy there line saying line that when he the goes, they will go. And that means when they jive, that's changing yeah, direction with the wind behind them. So it can just take us through and expand on those tactics. Well, the perfect situation for Alinghi is to gain a little bit forward, but mainly low. So that when Oracle jives, Alinghi can jive inside of them and block their air. But it's going to be rough on these guys to keep their air clear. In the early stages of leg number two, under the asymmetrical yeah. spinnaker, Oracle is holding their position as they're trying to extend, and Alinghi is trying to shut it down as they're getting ready for the jibe. It's just as good the other way. We can't get any lower on him because we're just getting his bad ear. Jive him, guys. So here they come for the jive. That's what we've been waiting for. That's a dummy jive by Oracle. And the Lingi was going to fall for it and hasn't. So immediately Oracle went through the dummy jive. And a Lingi was going through it. But they had their antennas up and came back. Yes. Peter, here they go. Cancel again. Cancel again. It's another dummy, it's another dummy, and the lady's going through, and Oracle has held off. They've done it again, so it's 
Chalingi out to the right, who has to go through the jive now under the starboard hand. Meanwhile, Oracle is back onto the port jive. If, what do you make of that? Well, they're going to split now. They're going to go for a ways here before anybody comes back. Alenia just trying to fill their tight and get moving, but I think this is a game for Alenia, at least in the short term. Oracle with two, two uh, course you know, changes there that slowed them down a little bit and Oracle sailing towards this massive spectator fleet, which is slowing down the wind a bit on their side of the course. The effect of the dummy jibe, that tactic employed by the team Oracle, Chris Dixon, was really to get away from the turbulent air that was going to be cast down onto them on the when the jibe was complete by, by Alingia. Alingia always in that trailing position, able to put the, the, the uh, turbulent ear down onto the leading boat. So it cost them a little bit, the Oracle team. It cost them a bit of speed to do the two dummy jibes, but it has meant that they can sail down the downwind leg with non-turbulent ear. And it looks like Lingi may have closed the game down a little bit. The advantage line. We'll just come up and have a look. 50 meters. And it looks like Oracle with the blue trail is just sailing a little bit higher. Alingi able to sail a little bit lower, which is a net gain to the Swiss. So it's all about wind strength, pressure. A lot of discussion happening on board Alingi. Jochen Schumann suggesting they should jive at that. So the first cross coming up on the run after Oracle forced Alingi out to the other side with two dummy jibes. At this stage, it's Oracle with a lead of around 90 meters. It looks like Alingi will not be able to get too close to them on this jibe. Brad Butterworth watching intently, thinking about the next move. It's always a big call. Should we go straight or jibe? Made harder by the very light conditions. You could hear Jochen Schumann talking about that Oracle had jibed up, jibed, um, rolled up their staysail. So they're playing it pretty tight, jibing right in the front there of Alingi. And we'll see immediately after the jibe, they have to keep their bow up or rotated, rotated there to the, the left all in the effort to build the speed before they can just let the bow come down at a deeper angle from the wind back to 94 that's chris dixon very encouraging at the moment make your gains now as oracle is extending peter when the boats are in the same water in the same breeze it seems that Oracle has a little edge in this wind speed. Here comes a jibe from Malingi. Oracle will match. Malingi just trying to do this whenever they can throw Oracle off a little bit, but hoping also that they get into some better pressure. Right or left? Any choice on the beat? Uh, just get the, we'll just get the slight line. So Peter Holmberg asking Chris Dixon right or left. It's Ian Burns right in front of Chris Dixon. He is the navigator. So Chris Dixon getting input also from Cameron Dunn and Tommaso Kiefi. Peter, both boats driving now, and I think that Oracle has done a fine job down this leg, stretching out just a little bit, but into a very strong position to round ahead in this next mark. And still the blue light flashing. It is not a police boat out on the water. It is the haunting reminder from the on-water umpires that the boat blue, which today is Oracle. It's a course zero. Right of zero is a good shift. It won't left be. is the left shift. Yeah, I think you're jib time, Maddie. Middle, Middle to right. Yep. Yeah. Ready? A little bit of main. So Ready here comes Oracle around the Lewis Mark. Ready for full trim. And 
actually the angle of attack of our ball gives them a nice, lovely circle. It's a little tighter on the link. Mark two, race six, Louis Vuitton Cup final. Oracle round in front, and the Louis Vuitton clock is ticking against the link. Now remember, Oracle led by 15 seconds at the last mark. And it is a game to Oracle on this first off with leg, leg number two. Jockey Bolt taking two. Lingi around the Lewis mark. And it stops at 28 seconds from 15 to 28. A gain of 13 seconds to Oracle. Okay, I'm out. Now, can Alingi hold it there and keep Oracle contained, or will Oracle be able to extend and seriously consider undertaking their penalty as they get closer to this top bear three? Aware of a line of pressure off Wong and Pro, a long way away. Yeah. He just fell slightly up. Very long He's together. squeezing. That is the voice of Cameron Dunn, who is high on the rig of Oracle. Yeah. Cameron Dunn and Murray Jones, they can be confused with all the other noise. So Cameron Dunn is telling the afterguard on Oracle, beware of a line of breeze coming out of Bonga Barola. And Peter Oracle, with the luxury of that gain downwind, now has a little more flexibility to play the shifts up to the beat. They don't have to be quite as nervous about a lingy getting around them. So I look for Oracle now to really aggressively play the shifts up this leg. Look for a little extension later. That's Cameron Dunn high up on the rig. He's an outstanding laser sailor here in Auckland. They'll get out to 130 meters. This is very encouraging for Oracle. Gotcha. Change of tactic here. We've seen a couple of covering tacks by Oracle of Alinghi. Okay, now we're starting, we're gonna cover something. And we can just hear Chris Dixon talking to, to Tommaso Kiepi, talking about which side do we want to cover. And right now they're setting themselves up to protect the right-hand side. So keep going till we get some riding. And already, just a small conversation there, we'll go straight here. We think we're in left-hand wind. They need to extend out to around 200 metres, and then we, if they get out to that amount of lead, I would expect to hear, there we go, we're out to 145. So they have made a small gain there. Yes, pretty even all around, still slightly better on the right. Little build here, guys. Well, you've always got to be careful you don't chase your tail, but for me, pressure is what it's all about. And if you have to make a decision between pressure and wind direction, it's the pressure, the increase in wind speed that the teams will look for. Yeah. Yeah, we're all right now. Okay. What a Same decent sale. chunk of separation. So that's the gauge or the distance between Both the boats out to 745 metres. And Oracle yeah. out there in the windward Going position. Are 150 metres ahead. So another two boat lengths. We could see Oracle try and get rid of their penalty. And certainly with the separation we now have between these two boats, any sort of a shift or increase in pressure to one or the other will result in a potentially significant gain. And that's what Oracle's betting on. A lot of people at home wondering why the boats are separating so far today. Well, both have an agenda. Oracle is separating, trying to get far enough ahead to do their penalty turn. Alingi is separating, trying to go the right way and gain a little bit back on Oracle. And to me, it looks like they have. Here's Russell looking underneath the boom. 30 meters, 29, it's dropping. Alingi has definitely made a gain. Will it last until the boats get together? Happy he's crossing. Is he crossing? Yes, he is. 
So is he lying? Murray Jones is asking, no, no, is he no, crossing? Two, 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 uh, out the other way. He's not lying. Well, look at the horizon, how slowly it's going by. I tell you, something that means the boat on, on Oracle there, that means the boats are very yeah, close together. Hey? I think he is crossing, yeah. He's in the very marginal. You can take it up Wow, it's even a question whether Oracle can cross. Can't afford another penalty, Dave. Going to higher now. Take up. 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 You heard Holmberg say to Dixon, we can't afford another penalty here. Lenny turning up a little bit to try and prevent Oracle from crossing. He's gone. He's committed. What a change in fortunes, Peter. Lenny has closed right up as it's a safe fluid, a lee bar, and a lee even tack off. The reason a lee tack off is because of the disturbed airflow coming out of uh, Oracle. But here's Oracle with an advantage of over 100 meters out to five or six boat lengths at one stage. Now, they may have half a boat length. And you see the spectator fleet. Spectators loving this match. So close together, there's the ley line, but definitely affecting the wind flow at the top part. The spectator is are, there's enough of them and they're big enough boats that they will slow the wind down, although that shouldn't advantage either competitor over the other. Oracle in a strong position to windward of the ley line at least so that they can make it, Alinghi have to choose whether to tack soon or to cross in front of Oracle. Coming down? Yeah, building a little tight. There'll be some rules involved here as they get ready to go around the weather mark. Alinghi has right of way, but in order to tack around the weather mark, they have to do so clear ahead of Oracle without fouling. And you see the traveler going down on Alinghi. Both boats reaching down, getting some speed on. Oracle wants to duck. Alinghi doesn't want that. So here goes Alinghi tacking. And they tack right in front of Oracle. So Alinghi is in front. Remember, they trail by 28 seconds at mark number two. And a very safe tack there by the team on Alinghi, knowing that they can't risk a penalty. They already have the advantage of a penalty against their competitor, and now they have the lead as well. Alinghi to the left, now in front. Bigger trim on. Oracle to the right. Both boats sailing high of the mark. Getting the poles ready for the hoist down wind. Oracle will have the advantage after we round because of being able to affect the wind flow of a lingy sail. Are you still happy just to go around this mark? Captain! Yes, he is. That way is good. That way is good. Wind direction is back to zero, dead even of what it was at the bottom end of the course, but far to the right of what we saw it for much of this beat. Six, Louis Vuitton Cup final mark three. And it's a Lingi who re lead round the mark for the first time in this race. The Louis Vuitton clock clicks off at 10 seconds advantage for the Lingi. Here come the hoist from both boats. A Lingi very good, so is Oracle. Now, can Oracle get on the air and do some damage? And you heard Brad Butterworth saying, Russell, if he jives, we're just going straight. I wouldn't jive right now, that's for sure. Take a little bit more off. I wouldn't jive right now, says Brad. Still a nice frustrating position for Oracle, and I'm sure a great sigh of relief by Alinghi to get back into this match. Yeah, well, that's, I think, what happened, because I tell you, the ship didn't save us. Well, a little bit, but in the end, we had pressure a lot. He just died in that corner. Okay, Chico, we're outside yard, so slowly. I think the important point is it's not so much the wind direction that's made the change here, or the direction change. It has been the right-hand side has had a little bit more wind speed. And that's I'm happy. Gonna job. Okay, we're going to jog, Cap. Yeah, I'm happy. It's a nice time, you know, he's just jogged. Yeah, waiting, waiting 15 or 10 more. Perfect. Very good time. Good. 
Malaki preparing to jive. They believe they've got good pressure where they are. A lead of around 80 meters. And the tactical consideration for a lingi now will be just to keep it close. Knowing that Oracle has a penalty outstanding. Oh, a bit of a messy jive there. The Windward Spinnaker Sheep Court deflecting the front of the Jenica. So that's an uncharacteristic error on board Alingi. Loading up the Jenica. Don't break it with a scoreboard. Yeah, Murray Jones. There's a little load on that sheet. Coming up for the cross. Alingi still ahead by a couple of boat lengths. So Oracle unable to make any inroads thus far. The Lingi with its staysail still set seems content to continue on this jibe. They don't look like they're setting up for a jibe to cover. They're going to continue on. Oracle electing to continue on as well. So a bit of a roll of the dice here. Mark number three, Oracle. We're just 10 seconds behind Alingi. That equates to about two boat lengths. Now, I think Alingi might have just extended their lead a little bit, given the boats are on opposite jibes. I'd be more nervous about giving away the left and the right. You'd rather go straight, would you? I think no. No, I think I'd rather jibe on the starboard. Wherever you want, rather than... Well, I think we've made a nice little gain here, so yeah. we, could, we could actually just go down and get our air clear in front and jive. Yeah, I'm happy with that, but I wouldn't swap sides. I wouldn't... Five and five. Wouldn't go on this, you know. Okay. Clear breeze Murray on the Jones other side. chatting with Brad Butterworth, communicating about which direction, which side he wants to go, which is best. Well, Murray Jones up in the rig, he has the advantage of being able to look and see where those little gusts of wind are, and Murray does not want to cross... That's the, indic that's the message he's given to Brad Butterworth. Wants to protect the windward side. Yeah, or just, you know. Is that going to set us up? So, on this downward leg, Alingi making better tactical choices and they're moving away. We're going to wind up just with a little advantage, you know. Just going to lock ourselves up later. He might just jump straight away, you know. But I don't want to get the other side of him, really. Oracle here. out to the left, the linky to the right, the, the white the dot in the middle, that the is side, mark number four, the second lured. So it's been smart same sailing from Malingi downhill. Can you see him? Yeah, if you're watching closely, so same as us. you notice that Oracle okay, jived, good. and then Malingi had to jive to defend, and then Oracle the sailed. Only four yeah, or five lengths and jived right back. Right, except... A lot of people wondering nice why. It's because like Oracle that. wants to try and nice find something to gain back up in there, hopefully to get inside at the rounding. They know they're not making any roads on the end to, uh, by just sailing in a straight line with a Lingy right now, so they're looking for some separation. That's how Lingy got around them. Oracle's looking for the same move to pay them back. So the separation nearly well, 600 metres. Why wouldn't you approach it on court? We're now about, jiving uh, pretty close to the ley line, hoping that they made a gain. But, the, but the, the problem, Peter, is that they have to make enough of a gain to pay for two jives. And they only have about, well, they had about four and a half minutes of sailing left in the leg when they made that decision. So they got to have... Over four minutes, they got to have enough of a game to gain three boat lengths up forward, plus two lengths of the jives that they've done. Pressure's been up here, guys. It's good. We're looking good here. This well, is Peter Holmberg encouraging his team. So, and here comes Alingi on their lay line. So we'll see how it goes. Alingi going through the jive. Problem for Oracle, as you saw right there, they're aiming at the mark. So if they get any more pressure or shift, they can't really use it to turn down and gain down the course. And in fact, there's the virtual spectator shows us that Alingi has extended their lead from the 70 meters that it was to 120, which is exactly two boat lengths, exactly the amount that you spend doing two jobs. Now, long term for Oracle, 
is that they're also going to come Ready around this mark doing a 180 yeah, degree turn rather than a 90 degree turn that Alenghi is going to be able to do, which is going to be slower again, and they'll lose a little bit more after they round this mark. So the philosophy is we come up with two legs to go. Should Oracle try and keep it close to at least force a penalty on, try and force a penalty, or do they just go off searching for their own breeze? I mean, well, I can promise you that Alenghi's not going to let Oracle go off looking for their own breeze now. Alenghi has not only the lead, and the distance between the boats to spend, but they've got another I'll just get the, I'll chunk get the of distance on, on to spend on beyond day. that. Like early right or Mexican? That Oracle has to get out in front to be yeah, able to do their race, penalty. Guys. Push it hard as you can for me. Holmberg saying this is the race, guys. So that's the mark, it's Alenghi out to the right. And a strong run for Alenghi, very impressive. Oracle starting to look a little desperate. They're, they're having to pull out something to wrap it out of the hat here. What's that? Mark four, Louis Vuitton Cup race six. Two legs to go. A Linky into the fifth and second last leg of the race. Hold this position. They will be challenging for the Americas Cup on February 15th. As Oracle rounds the mark, a Linky has made a game because the Louis Vuitton clock will stop at 24 seconds. So it is a gain to a Lingi of 14 seconds on that downhill slide. As they hit to mark Turn five, this is the last beat. And Peter, here and goes Oracle. Oracle has tacked across onto port, yep, tack and immediately a Lingi tacked right on top. And remember that right when Oracle tacked, they were slower than a Lingi. So a Lingi gaining at the moment, I'm sure. Come on, boys. That's me. Oh, it's you. It looks on my, uh, yeah. Alenghi matching Oracle's every move up this final beat to Winwood. They are not prepared to give them any leverage. The breeze has shifted to the left by around 10 degrees, presently out of 355, about nine knots of strength. As Oracle squeezes into attack once more, looking for some sort of opportunity to attack the advantage around 80 meters to Alinghi. As Holmberg builds speed, as they converge with Alinghi once more. And that's the advantage line to Alinghi, 95 meters. 100 meters, four boat lengths, the advantage. So it is Oracle who is on starboard going out to the left. It's good all the way this way, really, yeah. but it's still, it's sort of square off the mark. Meanwhile, on this conversation coming off of Lingi between Murray Jones and Brad Butterworth, it was Murray Jones who said, I think we should go out and bounce them. So here goes a Lingi tacking. Now, Peter, impressive again for Alinghi because we've had a 20 degree left hand shift and it has not helped Oracle enough to get back in the game. I think what's happened here is the breeze is up to about 9.7, 9.8 knots and Alinghi suddenly seems to have come alive and a lot more comfortable. But we've watched up this entire leg as Alinghi has stayed to the side they've chosen but close enough to keep in touch with Oracle. And all that's happened is each time Alinghi has made a little gain, they get a shift their way and they make a half a length here and a quarter length there, rather than going for any kind of a home run. And of course they don't need it. All they need to do is round this mark ahead and they're gonna be very comfortable. Down this next run with, a, with a Oracle owing a penalty. Now Oracle is tacked on the lay line for the mark. And it's a little bit soft where Oracle is right now. Alinghi will certainly come across. 
and tack on Oracle. It's a thin ley line at the moment. I'd be surprised if they're if, if Oracle's really convinced they're going to make the mark. And it seems like the breeze is just gently shifting back to the right, which is causing Oracle not to be quite on the ley line. Zambuca the night. Yeah. Both boats with their yeah. poles yeah. out. Dixon is calling for a jive set. And we see a wind direction now of 337, the farthest left of the day, and the wind has built from that side. 11 knots of wind speed now. Jive set with the fuel on the, on the headed jive early. That's what the boats want to sail downwind. And here a Lingy tacking away. Oracle will follow shortly. Yeah. Lingy would have stretched a little bit lately in that left hand pressure. Louis Vuitton Cup Final 2003, the 20th anniversary of this wonderful sailing competition. And Alinghi round the top mark for the last time in race number six, and perhaps for the last time in the Louis Vuitton Cup season for America's Cup 31. As the Louis Vuitton clock is ticking against Oracle, Lovely hoist from Alinghi, playing on confidence they're off. Will it be the third European challenger in the last four Louis Vuitton Cups? And the clock stops at 24 seconds. And PJ, you see the Oracle went ahead with the standard set. That's because the wind is shifting a little bit back to the right, but as much as anything, it was because it's, it's not a very fast maneuver to do a tack and then a jive and then a set. So they'll get moving it first and then they'll look for a split. Stand by. 3.25 nautical miles away. Here comes the jive from Oracle. They've just got to do something. They've got to make things happen. If they don't, this will be their last brigade race of the regatta. And Alinghi doesn't match. They know they've got a lot of lead to spend and the starboard advantage in their favor. So they'll go this way for a bit, get their air nice and clear before they come back. Well, right now Oracle are making a game, but we look at the... It's actually, they're making a huge game. It's right down to, what's that, 64 meters. So, bow to stern. Oracle in the wind and the reason for the big gain is that you can see there the converging of the blue line which is Oracle down onto the yellow line which is Alinghi so they've managed to get into a bit more pressure which is just enhanced the performance they're going a little bit faster but mainly gauging in towards Alinghi and we see Oracle here Driving away, realizing that if they follow Alinghi, they're not going to create an opportunity to pass or even engage. Looks like there might have been a bit of a twist there in the spinnaker. Yes, problem on board Oracle. Not the tidiest jive that I would have liked to have done. And Pete right there, I'm looking at a little tear in the bottom of Oracle's spinnaker. They had a bit of a problem there on that jive. And you got to be careful that they don't blow that thing up the next time they jive it and fill it. Five minutes to the finish line. You can tell that Oracle has gained forward. They need another three quarters of a length forward to start affecting the wind on a lingy. Certainly making a match out of this. And the staysail on a lingy is certainly, excuse me, on Oracle is certainly helping them with a little more speed. Nice, Robbie. Keep doing that when you can, mate. Oh, and I see Alinghi trying to turn up now to get a little more horsepower. They may be starting to get affected by Oracle. This is close. Just clear ahead for Alinghi. It's a big luff. It might be a halyard blow, okay? Still win the skirmish. A little bit of a ploy there by Peter Holmberg. He's saying if you, if you get a big luff, which is, which is a turn up into the wind by Alinghi. Then Oracle might blow their halyard. 
there's some special rules out here that give them that option, and Alinghi may have to stay clear. Right now, Oracle's got to stay clear, but look how close it is. They're putting their bad air shadow down on them. Oh, and there you see that spinnaker curling on on Alinghi. Oracle is affecting the sail. Oracle's going across. They're getting in front. Conservative on Alinghi. But Alinghi now at risk of Oracle drawing them into a foul. Oh, clear ahead now on Oracle. But they still have work to do. Here comes Oracle jiving. Or they might be just doing a double jive, throwing the main across, letting the Jenniker luff around. Back up. And then throwing the main back across to try and get to leeward of Alinghi. Full speed. Oracle wants to slow down and let Alinghi get up in there and fight. Nope. Thank you. Oh, boy, this is what we do all the time on the Swedish Match Tour. You've got, you got the lead, but you owe a penalty. Kutz does not want to get forced into a job. He does not want to get forced into an overlap. It's all about trying to get the spinnaker down for Russell Kutz to stay out of trouble. Serving the boat, driving all the way over this time on the lane. You must think he can lay the pin in. Oracle will certainly jive and turn up using their right of way as a lured boat to try and force the issue, but Alinghi might be able to roll over the top. This is a lot of risk for Alinghi. If they don't lay, they may find themselves in a lot of trouble here. Look at the heading of Alinghi. They're going outside the pin. Now, if they can get within three boat lengths of the pin end of the line, Alinghi will be allowed to have room. Yep. What a dramatic, supercharged finish to this race number six. Full speed, best you can. And the rip is getting bigger on Oracle's Jenica. Overlap, Jordy. Overlap. No overlap. Oh. I think I heard up players calling forward to Dixon, who called forward to Peter Holmberg, that there's no overlap. That's a definite game for Alinghi, an advantage to them. Doesn't matter. We just got strike. So Alinghi is hitting down to the line. They're over the top of Oracle. This the 61st day of the Louis Vuitton Cup. 42 sailing days. The 117th race involving nine challenges. In 2000, it was 202 and 95, 114. And Alinghi, led by Ernesto Verderelli, skippered by Russell Goots, wins the Louis Vuitton Cup 2003. So for the second America's Cup in a row, and the third in the last four America's Cup, it's a challenger from Europe. This time, from Société Nautique de Genève, or the Geneva Nautical Society. So for the first time in 152 years, or 31 America's Cups, a challenger from Switzerland. my pleasure tonight to give the Louis Vuitton Cup to the winning challenger. And I can tell you it will be a strong challenger for the America's Cup. Uh, yes, Brad. I also would like to thank the two teams because the two teams have given us a fantastic sight on the water. I would like to thank all the people who participated to the event. And I also would like to thank the people of New Zealand for their sportivity and their passion for the event. So thank you everybody and congratulations Salingi.
team on stage, please. And now, Janik Barré from Wendy Chandon will give you more bubbles. Janik. <laughs> <laughs> 